Hello, this is a video about beams. Specifically, we've got two beams, beam A and beam B. They've got the same cross-sectional dimensions, so we've got 6 by 10 and 6 by 10, but beam A is being loaded transversely to the x-axis. Okay, so it's being loaded transversely to the six, six inch width. And beam B is being loaded transversely to that 10 inch width. So basically we're, we're looking at a cantilever beam, this back uh, symbol, supposed to be a plane of fixity or a fixed connection. And we wanna figure out moment of inertia, and figure out something about strong axis bending versus weak axis bending. I made a little CAD model of this problem because on one hand, it's pretty simple and straightforward, right? We know that the formula for the moment of inertia of a rectangle is simply B H cubed over 12, right? So, on one hand, yeah, it looks like a really basic, simple, straightforward problem, but I'm going to use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about some aspects of beam behavior, beam deflections, beam stresses that will be helpful as we progress through this unit. All right, so basically I've got that exact same beam modeled here in 3D, and I didn't model it twice. This is beam A. Right, so we see that six inch width here. Let me zoom in a little bit there. Y bar, I think it's Y bar. Let me go back at the coordinate system. Yeah, so Y is going up. The longitudinal axis is Z, right? Longitudinal is Z because it's going all the way down the beam axis. And then X and Y, of course, are cross-sectional dimensions. So y bar is equal to this five inch distance from the bottom fiber up to the center of the rectangle. And there's our x axis, which happens to be our axis of bending in this problem. I think that's one of the most important concepts to think about right now in this video. So here's our undeformed geometry. We have that uniform live uh, line load on the top. Got a little short cantilever, a fixed plane. That's what that dark blue color is. And this shows what's happening between the undeformed geometry, the yellow, and then the curving and sagging concave down, negative bending moment, deflected shape of that beam. Um, I'm going to go, I have that one kind of shown in 2D here. And what I want you to look at is the cross-sectional plane. So all these vertical black lines represent the cross-sectional planes. And do you see how each one is pivoting and rotating about X? Each one is pivoting and rotating about X. Let me show you again the full sequence. So here's the undeformed geometry, just plain rectangular prismatic beam. There's our cross section. We can figure out the axis of bending by visualizing the deformed shape. And note carefully here that I have that x axis model twice. That's not an accident. So my undeformed x axis is here. And then as that plane pivots, right, I could look at an x prime axis, the deformed location. I can go straight. I think this might be more clear if I go from undeformed to deformed. Okay, when I will see it all together, it looks like that. I'll put that in 2D as well. Let's see, I think like that. There we go. So this one is superimposing undeformed geometry with the deformed geometry. We notice that the cross-sectional planes are pivoting about X. We can identify therefore that X is the axis of bending. So what moment of inertia is in play here? It's the X axis. Let's jump back into 2D and set that up. 
Okay, so the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. What I want to do is use the formula for a rectangle, and my base is 6. That's because it's parallel to the x-axis. My height is 10, and you want to cube the term that is perpendicular to the x-axis. And of course, we divide by 12. There's our formula up there. Okay. 6 times 10 cubed divided by 12 is equal to 500 inches to the fourth. That is beam A. As we go over to beam B, you know, we still have the force downward in this direction. It's going to sag and have concave down curvature just as it does in this model. I just didn't take the time to do another CAD model where that beam was loaded flat wise. So this is the same models before, but that characteristic curvature is going to be the same. The only difference is the deflection is going to be more pronounced. It's going to be more pronounced because that is the weak axis of the cross section. It's going to be way more flexible when loaded in flexure or bending. Okay. Of course, we'll be able to figure that out mathematically. For now, let's just do the moment of inertia. So again, here is our axis of bending. That's x. I sub x, the moment of inertia about that centroidal axis, meaning it passes through the centroid, is this formula, bh cubed over 12. The base is the one that is parallel to the axis, so 10 inches. The 6 inch dimension is perpendicular to that axis, so we have our 6 inches. We're going to cube it and divide all that by 12. This one will get 180 inches to the fourth. Now, how do we know? For this same beam, if I orient it in this manner or this manner, the one on the left doesn't really have a name that I know of. The one on the right, you would you could call this flat wise. But if you want to figure out which orientation is advantageous, which orientation is going to give us the smallest stresses, it's the one with the biggest moment of inertia. So because 500 is greater than 180, beam A is showing us strong axis bending. Beam B is an example of weak axis bending. In a design situation, assuming that your intent is to use the beam most efficiently, you're going to want to orient it in this manner, minimizes deflections, minimize stress, minimize strain. Um, this way is less efficient. You'll get bigger deflections, bigger stresses, bigger strains, and bigger curvature too, right? So curvature or the shape of this deformed shape here, that's all going to be governed by the moment of inertia. That's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in.